about that. Hi, today I'd like you to meet Simon Clark. Simon is a PhD student studying atmospheric physics and he's also a YouTuber. And today we're going to be talking about the role of creativity in problem solving. Come on, Simon. I have got a challenge for you. Okay. I've been given this riddle and I can't for the life of me figure it out, so maybe you can help a bit. Okay, let's hear it. So, picture the scene. Romeo and Juliet, they're both dead. There is water, there is broken glass, and the window is open, but not broken. What's happened? Maybe, um, maybe it was a glass container uh, which had ice, and then there was a hollow in the middle of it which had like poison gas in it. And that was thrown through <laughs> the window, and then the ice cracked, and the glass cracked and melted, and then the gas was released and it killed them both, and then the ice melted. That is a possibility. How about we have some lemon tea, think about a little bit more, and have a little chat about creativity? Sounds great. Let's go. Simon, you studied physics at university. What made you choose to study atmospheric physics at PhD level? In my third year of doing physics, right, so up until that point, in a physics degree, you do quite basic stuff. You're doing like billiards on like smooth tables, like bounce off each other, or you will do um, electric waves, and it's, it's stuff that's quite abstract. And then in my third year, we started doing something called geophysical fluid dynamics. So how the ocean moves, how the air moves. So the ability to have really quite basic equations, like the geostrophic equations, uh, it's two equations that describe how like, the ocean moves in response to changing the temperature, the pressure. Um, that to me was immediately, it felt really powerful and uh, it was like practical. I could, I could see how you would use it to predict the weather. I could be like, wow, if I knew what the pressure was, I could see how fast the wind's going to move. That's really cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, was, I, was, I just um, immediately connected with these equations. It was really, really kind of strange I, in a way that I hadn't with anything before. So I knew that's what I wanted to do. So I know that the physics that you do in high school changes a lot when you get to university. Yeah. Has the way you perceive it changed over that time? I think it's an Asimov quote when he said that um, the most interesting words in science aren't eureka, it's that's funny. It's when you see something that doesn't quite make sense, you think, hang on, no, you've got to pursue that. Um, and that, that's what researchers I now realise is. It's, it's just people who are really passionate about something, uh, but also really curious. Like, they will see something and just kind of think that something's not quite right. It needs a little bit more explaining, a little more data on it. Yeah, being, being creative with equations, uh, which is like something that I think most people think is impossible because, you know, how could you be creative with something that you put a number in and you get a number out? But there's so much more to it than that. And it's only through people trying new things and coming up with crazy ideas that you get improvement. So it's much cooler to me now um, than when I was a kid. In your last year of your undergraduate, you also started making lots of videos about your life as a student and about the science you do. Mm -hmm. Have you found that making those videos has actually changed the way you approach or think about your research? You know, when I was starting, I was like using a phone, basically, um, and I was just talking to camera. I was very poorly lit. You couldn't really see my face. I was out of focus. Um, and I basically, over the years, just sort of every video tried to do it a little bit better. And eventually you get to the point where I'm actually okay at making videos now. And I feel like that's kind of what I've done with science as well. When you leave uh, your undergrad, um, probably it's the same for you, uh, you, you have an understanding of things. Like you kind of know vaguely what's going on in the same way that I knew what a camera was when I started for filmmaking. Um, but it's only through trying uh, and um, looking at what other people have done and then doing it but putting your own spin on it and trying something that you haven't done before and also making a video that hasn't been made before. Um, and so, you know, I definitely see the parallels between the creative side of my life, well, you know, the creative side in that it's where I make videos and the rigorous scientific part of my life um, because they talk to each other all the time. Okay, Simon, out of curiosity, whose way of thinking creatively do you admire the most? <sighs> if I had to pick one person, I think Bill Wirtz, he takes these massive concepts like the history of the world and does it in this 20 minute video through like basically jingles, like six second jingles, but one yeah. after the other. And the, it's like bang, 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 all this information, but it's in digestible form. It's like, it's totally unlike any other way I've seen of explaining the history. It's not long form, it's like attention grabbing. 
you know, it's just a different way of looking at it. Yeah, you never notice the 20 minutes go by and it's yeah. so catchy as well. Yeah, yeah. Actually, maybe we need to think about that riddle differently. Yeah. Like, instead of looking at, like, the history of the world in, like, a long documentary, maybe we need to change... I don't know, maybe Romeo and Juliet aren't Romeo and Juliet from Shakespeare. So as in, maybe they're not the characters? Well, they could just be names for some... anything, any two things. Maybe they're not human? Could they be someone's pet? If, if there's only water and glass, what if they're fish? That could be a good point. And if the window's open, maybe something has flown in and knocked over their water yeah, tank. Yeah, like, like a cat could have come in and knocked the water tank off. So when you said Very that good. they drowned, yeah. they, well, they were up until the point where they came out of the water. So I guess they are literally fish out of the water. Very good. <laughs> okay, well, that's nice. Okay. That's nice that well, we think, cracked it. I think we've cracked that one. And I have one more question for okay. you. Have you ever found that thinking creatively or being creative has helped you overcome a barrier in some way? When I came to the end of my degree, my undergraduate, I, I think I, um, I was basically too zoomed in on work. I, only, I didn't like exercise, I didn't really see friends, I was just way too focused and uh, it kind of eventually wore me down. And when I went to my PhD, I realised that if I zoomed out a bit and mm. I started seeing work within the context of the rest of my life, but also stopped seeing like exams as like a test it was like oh you must do this or we will judge you kind of thing yeah. it was more a case of this is an opportunity for you to show what you can do it's like mm. a positive thing nothing had actually changed in my life it was just how i looked at the world it really impacted how like i performed like i did so much better as soon as i started realizing this so basically challenging myself to think well you know maybe i could think about my life in a different way what could i what could i do um really made a definite change to you know how well I, I do my job. So almost literally you stopped seeing your work as the humans Romeo and Juliet. Yes I started seeing them, as, them a, as, something different. as the abstract names and the fish. As you may have seen in order to be able to solve problems creatively you need to think laterally, view things from a different perspective and question your assumptions. For instance, you may have thought we were in Russia, but actually we're in a Russian-themed village on the outskirts of Berlin. If you would like to optimise your creativity and train all four elements of your curiosity, click the link to visit the Curious Elements programme.